Blink, and four years have gone by. Blink, and suddenly Ansu Fati has gone from 16 to 20 years old. From becoming the second youngest debutante in 78 years back in 2019, to his fourth season with the first team, now in 2023, where he's gone from a regular as a youngster to a bit part player that comes off of the bench now. And his future, as murky as ever. Health, or the lack of it, has played perhaps the biggest role in his story of late, as Fatih has had multiple injuries and even more surgeries in the last three years. When you couple that with an outspoken father and a super agent who, well, always finds a way to move his clients, well, it's going to be an interesting summer for the young Spanish attacker, who was once heralded as the heir to Messi. Hey folks, and welcome back to another video here on Robota TV. I'm Adrian, by the way, and hey, if you're new, don't do anything yet. No actionable items yet. But if you're new and you find yourself enjoying the video, then consider subscribing. Beyond that, let's dive in. Asumane Fate Vieira's story is an incredible one. Born in Guinea-Bissau, his father, Bore Fati, actually moved to Europe before the rest of his family, as he too was a footballer that played in Portugal before settling in a small town near Seville, which is where his family joined him. As Bore said when speaking to Cope, quote, at six or seven, Ansu came to Spain. I had come here before and I didn't know he played football. They told me I was not aware of how good my son was and that he was dribbling by everybody. And he continued dribbling past everyone playing for a local side named Herrera. But he would continue to do the same once he was picked up by Sevilla's academy in 2010. And as his father tells it, it didn't take long for the two big guns of the country, Real Madrid and FC Barcelona, to come calling. Bori has said, quote, We were at Sevilla and Real Madrid offered me better conditions than Barcelona for my son. But they came to my house to convince us. Albert Puch came and told me that my son had to sign for Barcelona. Sevilla got mad and Monchi asked how much they offered that he wanted him to stay at Sevilla. As you will already know, he didn't linger at Sevilla, and in 2012, at the age of 10, Fati made the move to La Masia. He thrived in these conditions, and those words his father spoke about him dribbling by everyone, that will have continued at Barca as well, as Fati made a reputation for himself as being a supreme dribbler that can play in almost any position in the attack due to his size and speed to go with his control. And so, in July of 2019, he signed his first professional contract, thus starting a meteoric rise at Barca. One month later, Ernesto Valverde handed him his debut, making him the second youngest player to represent Barcelona at the time, behind Vicenz Martinez, who was 18 days younger than Fati when he debuted for Barca in 1941, 78 years prior. Now, the club that Ansu Fati made his debut against, Real Betis, was also the club where he would pick up what seems to be a career-altering injury, career-defining perhaps, but we'll get to that later. Because just six days later, Ansu Fati scored against Osasuna, becoming the youngest scorer in Barca's history at 16 years, 10 months, and zero days. He wasn't done there, as a couple weeks later, he became the youngest player in La Liga history to score and assist in the same match. And this was at a Barcelona side that had just signed Griezmann, still had Messi and Suarez, Dembele was somewhere in there, etc. A 16-year-old coming into this side and instantly becoming one of their best attackers? That's a crazy feat. And of course, he would come on late against Inter in the Champions League to score what would be the winner and would in turn make him, yes, once again, the youngest scorer in Champions League history at 17 years and 40 days old. Wow. In all, he finished his first senior campaign at the age of 16 and 17 with 33 appearances, eight goals, and one assist, most commonly playing as a winger. But what's important to notice here is that there were little niggling injuries along the way, knee issues that would become far bigger problems than any would have anticipated at such a young age. In his second season with Barcelona's senior side, the 2020-21 season, he was off to a flyer both for club and country. Luis Enrique rewarded his great club form with some Nations League call-ups as Fati scored and assisted against Ukraine in September of 2020. Prior to that, for Barcelona, he scored a brace and assist in their first match of the La Liga season against Villarreal, then followed that up with a goal against Celta de Vigo, and later, in October, a goal against Real Madrid in a 3-1 loss. How about his Champions League performances? From three appearances, he scored once and assisted three times. 
things were going great, and all of this as he was just turning 18 years of age in October. Some believed they had finally found the heir to Lionel Messi. Now remember what I said about Betis? How Fati made his debut against them and the story didn't end there? Well, around halftime against Betis in November of 2020, Fati was taken down in the box. He won a penalty, but lost far more than that, as he injured his meniscus in the process, his knee. An injury that was supposed to require four months of rehabilitation, three to five it said, turned into a nine month layoff. How? He went from a relatively simple surgery to requiring a second surgery after his knee was inflamed and not responding well to rehab. A third surgery occurred in spring of 2021 until finally he had a fourth operation which removed the part of his meniscus that was causing him the recurring issues. Now the frustrating thing, as documented by The Athletic actually, link below, would be that after his first surgery, Barca's medical staff went against the wishes of the specialist who was overseeing his surgery and rehab by having fat take part in two sessions per day as opposed to the recommended single session per day. The inflammation on his knee that necessitated a second surgery, which led to a third and a fourth, may have done permanent damage to his knee and led to further injuries, unfortunately. Now, after sitting out nine months with his knee injury, Fatih returned to action in September of 2021, scoring a goal on his return against Levante. Two matches later, he got a goal and an assist against Valencia before he was sidelined with some knee issues once again, probably somewhat precautionary and rightfully so. But by November 6th, he was out once again with a hamstring injury, only to return two months later in January for a Copa del Rey match against Athletic Club. Fatih came on in the 61st minute of that match, but by the 96th, he was subbed off with yet another hamstring injury. Injury after injury, Fatih would return to action at the beginning of May 2022, but while he's managed to gain his fitness and keep it, he hasn't gained the favor of Xavi yet. Well, Ansu is back and getting minutes coming off of the bench, but his game doesn't resemble that of the Ansu Fati that Barcelona supporters fell in love with, which could be the reason behind him not getting the minutes that were previously afforded to him by Valverde and Koeman. I'm not a doctor, so take from this what you will, but for anyone who has played sports of any kind, they'll know that the knee is vital when it comes to quick changes of direction and lateral movements, of course. If you've had a knee injury yourself, welcome my brothers and sisters, <laughs> then you'll know that once you return to action, these changes of direction are terrifying for a while. And so when you lose faith in your own knee, it's difficult to play in that same tricky, shifty style that made Fati such a headache in the first place, not only due to his knee needing to be strong when he changes direction, but the physical contact that kind of play invites from your opponents. On top of that, anyone who has pulled a hamstring, again, welcome my brothers and sisters, <laughs> will probably tell you that they did it when accelerating into a sprint, while sprinting or decelerating. And so for Ansu Fati, when you have struggled with both injuries, the toll that takes on your decision making, your commitment to the play, it subconsciously affects you and you can take a long time to recover not just the muscle tissue, but the mental side, that regaining of faith in your own body and getting back to what made you the player that you are. It's tough. It's a weird, frustrating and scary thing to not being able to trust your own body, especially when that's how you make your living. In La Liga, Fati has started just 10 matches and while his impact on the pitch has gone down, the worrying thing has been how he has changed his game. He's dribbling far less, which was one of the things that made him so good, as he looks like he's lost confidence in his body, which is a very, very common occurrence for those who have had massive injury layoffs such as his. This season, he is averaging 2.93 take-ons attempted per 90 minutes, which puts him in the 38th percentile. Compare that to pre-injury, he was averaging 4.64 take-ons per 90 and was in the 76th percentile in that regard. He would also look to drive into the penalty area far more prior to his injury, doing so 4.03 times per 90 during the 2019-20 season. That's good enough to be in the elite 97th percentile in La Liga, but now he does it half as much at 1.98 times, putting him in the 85th percentile. Still respectable. Now there have been moments where we have seen flashes of the old fatty, but it's now his finishing that is letting him down as he looks a little bit shot shy in front of goal. And just as a side note, his expected goals per 90 has gone up compared to his old self, but the finishing is lacking as his shot accuracy has dropped from 36.4% pre-injury to 24.1% post-injury. 
Chavi spoke of Fati following their recent win over Osasuna, saying, quote, He's played very well, honestly. He missed only one thing, which was finding the goal. He dribbled nicely, ran faster, and shot well, but didn't find the goal. That was it for Ansu, but his game was good. He had six attempts against Osasuna, and only one was on target. And again, it would be tempting to say, ah, what do you expect? Barca signed an entire new team in the summer of 2022. Of course he's not playing, but let me remind you, when he was just 16, 17 years old, he was competing against Griezmann, Suarez, Messi, Dembele, and still getting plenty of playing time. He isn't playing now, not due to a loss of ability, but a loss of confidence and subsequently a major loss of form. The two compound each other to make a nice, vicious snowball effect. And on top of that, Xavi actually shined a light upon the other aspect that doesn't allow Fati to play in a focused, relaxed manner, the media. Quote, What does not help him nor any player is that while they are fighting for the league title, they have to see in the media that they're for sale. Then we want them to score goals and do everything right. Today I saw a front cover from a newspaper that was saying Ansu Fati could leave the club for 70 million euros. There are those who would say, eh, it's part of being a professional footballer. And they're right, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't affect him. That Fatih, still just 20, is immune to these kinds of things in the media. The unfortunate aspect is that there are those in his own camp that are fueling this. It does indeed feel like his father and Mendez have been in his ear, creating additional distractions for him. They no doubt will be saying that he must leave Barcelona in order to get more opportunities, while for Fati, he has previously stated that he'd like to stay at Barcelona. He's been at odds with his father there. As his father said back in March, quote, If it was down to me, I'd take him away from Barca. But Ansu wants to stay. We are talking about the number 10 from Barcelona, a Spanish international and a starlet coming through La Masia. Ansu does not want to leave, but I want to see him succeeding in football. I mean, as unhelpful as these claims may be for Ansu, you can see his father's perspective as well. And of course, it's easy to see Jorge Mendes' perspective too, the octopus of football who would happily take a cut in any prospective move. But Mendes and Ansu Fati's father were pictured meeting together during Barca's match against Osasuna on Tuesday. Fati joined them later. And upon leaving the meeting with Mendes, Bori was asked whether Ansu would be playing with Barca next season, to which he answered, quote, yes, for sure. As we know, there is a lot of smoke and mirrors in football, and situations can change with the drop of a hat. The most likely scenario, given what we've heard from Ansu himself, is that he wants to stay and fight, even if it goes against his father's wishes. But there's also a world where Fatih's insistence to stay at Barca is being eroded away with every match he starts on the bench. Only Fati can answer that. But what we do know is this, an extremely bright star has been dimmed thanks to a series of horrific injuries at such a young age. Not only that, but the mismanagement of those injuries contributed to this as well. And now his form is seemingly not coming back to him. Even a lovely goal in the Super Cup didn't bring his powers back. And as things stand, he scored once and assisted zero times in his previous 20 appearances. At 20 years old, he's had to go through a roller coaster of tribulations and injuries that most normally experience in an entire career. But with the achievements he has under his belt, he hasn't exactly had a normal career. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then hey, a like is always appreciated. If you really liked it and you're new here, then why not subscribe for more? Whatever you choose, thanks for spending your time with me. I'm Adrian, and enjoy the football. Ciao! Thank <laughs> you.